News Channel 15 presents The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television. With hosts Bryce West and John Freeland, this is The Film Reel. Hello and welcome into The Film Reel, your number one source for everything going on in the world of movies and television. I'm your host, Bryce West, here with John Freeland once again, and we are going to be getting into the box office results for this last weekend. Number one is Tenet, moving on. Uh, you <laughs> know, I mean, obviously it's, it's impressive, but we've, we've been talking about Tenet for, in depth for every week, yeah, basically since we this entire back. season. So uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and, and say, surprise, Tenet's number one. Uh, number two is New Mutants. Number three, Unhinged. And the thing that we will actually talk about, number four, Coming in at number four, Star Wars, Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. John? I was <laughs> surprised when I saw it on the list. It, it's apparently a 2020 re-release. Or yeah, like that. It's, it's one of those deals to where they re-release super popular movies just to get money trickling in yeah, for the theaters. Yeah, pretty much. So the, they'll, they'll put something like Star Wars in because they know everybody's going to, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are going to go see it because it's because it's Star Wars on the big screen. So that's why uh, they have it there. Uh, it's gotten its way all the way up to number four being a movie that came out in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, it has barely any competition at the moment yeah. in the theaters, <laughs> yeah. so... That's so it true. makes That's sense true. that a big movie would become big yet again, yeah. especially in theaters. So if there's like people wanting to watch something, yeah. they'll be like, hey. So I mean, number four, $900,000 in this era. I cannot believe that if you, if you told me a year ago that 900000 number four was going to be a good thing, uh, <laughs> I would say you're crazy. Uh, but no, 900000 to number four is a really good number, especially for just Star Wars that has just been out for... I mean, uh, well, this this iteration has been out for almost forty years, I yeah. believe, um, and so it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy to be honest. I mean, that's almost just a free million dollars for Disney in in, in the bank right now, just, just just by putting out Empire all Strike, to, Strikes Back, backing out into the the, uh, the theaters. All they had to do was pay for marketing, and uh, they didn't know they didn't well, barely even market. Any market. They didn't market. This they could have put on Disney Plus, like, "Hey, go watch our movie." No, I don't even think they marketed this thing at all. I it think just it just was there. I, I th yeah, I think they <laughs> just, just put it onto theater. I, have you seen a trailer or or a, oh, or a commercial telling you to go watch Empire Strikes Back? I didn't even know one. it was playing. Neither did I. And, and, so. Until I until I printed out this sheet here, uh, so I I assumed that there really was little to nothing going into this. They just dropped it, and they, they just said, "Here, uh, play this," and yeah. you know, because uh, I mean, well, Disney doesn't really have anything playing right now. Yeah. So honestly, they came out this with is their... probably a really good idea. Just just put this out. Everybody's already seen it, but it's Star Wars, so everybody's gonna go go out and go watch it. So it's weird because they just dropped like Mulan, but they did that on Disney Plus. Yeah. And this movie, uh, Star like Episode Five, is already on Disney Plus. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. We can go ahead and talk about. That. Um. So I feel the difference here is that they did put money into Mulan, right? Yeah. So they were. They, I don't think that they were willing to take the humongous risk, huge risk, uh, putting movies out into theaters right now uh, by, by uh, putting out Mulan. Uh, because, I mean, that movie cost hundreds of millions of dollars, right? So, and, and the only reason why Tenet is still doing well is because everybody's too scared to put their movie out, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, even then, I don't think Tenet's even broken even yet. So they, they haven't, uh, so right now they're still in the losing range. I do think they will eventually make profit on the film, but it will take a really long time. Uh, at this rate, they're going to be number one for quite a while. So. Uh, at this rate, I would agree. I don't really see anything coming anytime soon that is going to beat it. Uh, but yeah, but well, going back to the difference here between this uh, coming out, Star Wars and Mulan, they can put this out. No risk. It's just they. The movie was yeah. made forty years ago. Just, just slap just it play, out there. Yeah. Uh, Mulan is a little bit of a different story. They wanted to make sure that they they could get people to go watch it. I don't. I don't think they're ever going to release the numbers for Mulan on Disney Plus. I doubt it did as well as it would probably in the theater. Honestly, 
I probably still would have released it in the theater because if you really think about it, Mulan surely would have top ten it. Surely, I don't know. I, I say that, or at but, least like made the price a little lower because then it's like $30. well, yeah, it was thirty dollars, and you don't even own the film. Yeah, I'd say pay. 10, so I feel like, like that was definitely a turn off for a lot of people. So I mean, yeah, but I think this is a great way for Disney to continue to make money here in the box office. Just re-release episode five, <laughs> no big deal. So speaking of 40th anniversaries, Empire Strikes Back uh, should be coming up here soon. But also the 40th anniversary of Friday the 13th is this year and it's one of the most influential horror movies i'd say of all time i, I i'd say that's pretty safe to say uh, the shining is also one of those to where it's probably one of the more influential films but this this film kind of changed everything because this film came out it was rated r and it came out at a time to where rated r movies weren't really a thing they were they were kind of brand new here and Friday the 13th comes out, it's rated R, and it's one of the first of its kind, I believe. And, and so, I mean, it kind of paved the way for a lot of the horror films to come out after it. So, John, what are your thoughts on Friday the 13th, its 40th anniversary, and its impact that it's had on the film industry? I mean, I didn't realize it was the 40th anniversary, but I might go uh, watch it later. I am actually a big fan of Friday the 13th. Um, it's one of my top two like horror genres, second to the Scream. I know it's weird uh, yeah. choice of my top two. But yeah, I, well, I, well, I mean, it's horror. I yeah, mean, they're, I they're, quite they're, entertaining. they're naturally going to be weird, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm, I, was, I, I love the Friday the 13th movies, and I think they've done a lot for the horror genre. Oh, so. yeah, for sure, yeah. Their Definitely. sequels may have not been well, the best, but... Well, we, 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 we weren't talking about the sequels. We're talking about yeah. the original here, right? Yeah. So, no, yeah. So, as, as, as a tradition with every horror franchise, they have to have at least six or seven terrible uh, follow-ups. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, but no, Friday the 13th, it definitely changed the, the film industry, and not only that, but the horror genre in general. Uh, forever. So, yeah. moving on to some pretty major news for comic book fans. Jamie Foxx is going to be reprising his role as Electro in the new Spider-Man movie starring Tom Holland. Jamie Foxx originally played uh, the character w in the previous iteration of Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, the Tom Holland, the new one, is a reboot of that. So, it's, it's really weird to see this here. Uh, Jamie Foxx uh, coming back to play the character who wasn't really involved with this iteration of characters. This is a reboot, and now he's coming back to play the character that he played before. So this has definitely raised a lot of eyebrows here as to whether or not this is just going to be a coincidence and they just wanted to play Jamie Foxx, uh, have Jamie Foxx to play Electro because he did a good job. Because he... Because the movie itself was pretty bad, but, but I do think that, that Jamie Foxx's portrayal as a character was one of the better parts of the movie. And then, uh, or, you know, the, the, the Spider-Verse is ginormous, right? I mean, the, the, the Spider-Man universe has been expanded so much over the past uh, 10, 15 years, I believe. And so people are wondering if they're going to be introducing some alternate universes and introducing the Spider-Verse into the live-action films. Because we've already gotten the animated iteration of that with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Uh, but now pe fans are wondering if they could be doing that in, in live-action now with Jamie Foxx joining the fold here. So, John, what are you, what are you thinking? Are you thinking that, that this is going to just be Jamie Foxx playing... A new version of Electro, or do you think that they're going to be introducing alternate timelines, alternate universes, and the Spider Verse? And do you think that this is going to be the Electro that he played in Amazing Spider Man 2? Well, um, I'm pretty sure like he dies at the end of that movie, so it's it's hard to. Well, well yeah, yeah, this I guess is a he, comic book movie, remember? Yeah, so, so he is <laughs> pure energy, so he yeah. kind of also just became energy. Um, he could, he very well could. Yeah. It comic could be book a, movies, comic books in general. They're never dead. Yeah, they're, ne they're never dead. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he could be like the same role. I know he did like he was one of the better parts of the movie. I agree with that. Um, him as one of the only better parts of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he actually was a villain that you felt yeah. bad for and everything. And, yeah, like he did a really good job with it. I'd say. Um, I'm I'm very interested on to see like what they are planning to do with it because if yeah. they already start the Spider Verse, it makes sense because um, they 
at the very end of Homecoming, they, you know, tease that everyone knows his identity and everything. You mean Far From Home, but yeah. Oh, Far From Home, yeah. yeah. Bad. Um, and so they need to add more twists and everything, so yeah. I would not be surprised. Well, yeah, it will be, it'll be interesting to see what, what kind of bigger twists they're going to have after the end of Far From Home, because Far From Home, that's about as big of a twist as you can get besides doing the Spider-Verse. So I'm definitely very interested to see and very intrigued to see what is going on there, and I cannot wait to see what happens. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, and right after this, we're going to have more of the film reel. News Channel 15, winner of the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Award for the nation's best community college TV station. News Channel 15 presents Sports Extra, a weekly look at local and area sports. See it Thursday nights at 6.30 on News Channel 15, also posted to our Facebook page. It's Sports Extra. The tri-state source for alternative rock is 89.1 The Bash. Connect with us wherever you are on social. Listen live on our free mobile apps, online or on TuneIn. We are today's hit alternative, 89.1 The Bash. It just takes a moment to spread from one person to another. So how do you break the germ cycle? Wash your hands often and always after coughing, <laughs> sneezing, handling food, and going to the bathroom. Lather the front, back, and in between for at least 20 seconds. If there's no soap or water available, use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Regularly disinfect common surfaces, including your phone. These small things can help break the germ cycle. Here in Southern Illinois, we all know the weather can change in an instant. When severe weather strikes, you can count on the team at News Channel 15 to provide you the latest information to keep you and your family safe. From watches and warnings to storm spotter information with our direct link to the National Weather Service, the team at News Channel 15 is here to give you the most up-to-the-minute severe weather coverage, not only on air, but also online and on our Facebook page. News Channel 15, putting Southern Illinois first. Welcome back into the film reel. David Daniel has your look at today's Hollywood Minute. My name is Borat. I'm a journalist for Kazakhstan. Borat is back. Sasha Baron Cohen has made a sequel to his 2006 satirical documentary, Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Cohen and company reportedly made the sequel on the sly, just as coronavirus filming restrictions were eased. Cohen's latest adventures, Meeting Real People While in Disguise, is set to premiere on Amazon Prime in late October. They've all got their opinions, but then what do they John said to me, I want to be an actor and create. Here's your first look at the new documentary, Belushi. Award-winning filmmaker R.J. Cutler retells the tale of the late great John Belushi with the help of previously unheard audio tapes featuring the legendary performer's family, friends, and collaborators. Belushi debuts November. And Krauss. Believe is due out November 13th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, there's a look at that. So, some new Borat stuff coming out. Borat is definitely uh, goofy. Uh, I don't know how to describe that one. So, it, it is uh, for fans of the original, it is really cool to see them yep. making another. So, moving on, Stranger Things resumes uh, production. Uh, I don't know if it was today or if it's here soon, but, but they will be resuming production on Stranger Things. And I believe that they are uh, positioning this to be the final season, and they're going to have a sort of film of sorts to wrap up the series. So definitely good news for Stranger Things fans. So, John, what are your thoughts on yet another uh, major franchise resuming production here? I mean, um, 
I think it's good for uh, like businesses to start creating films again and doing their series again because a lot of them were losing money due to yeah. COVID. A lot of the like editors and like cast are like jobless without it. Yeah, yeah. So sure. it's it's good to have it start coming up again and see that more businesses and more like film films yeah. will be coming up after COVID and that COVID's slightly yeah. dying down or they know how to deal with COVID now and how to avoid it. But it's also slightly scary for if like one actor gets sick, you yeah, have to sure. stop like And we've seen filming. that happen before. I mean, we've reported on, on numerous stories where that has happened. The Batman is definitely the biggest one where Robert Pattinson, the star of the film, got uh, COVID-19. He recovered uh, nicely. But yeah, it's definitely very... It, you got to be very cautious with this kind of stuff, and I and I also see a lot of things to where people go, oh well, if they're working on a movie, they're they're millionaires, so so they they can they they'll be fine without work. And while yes, that is true for some of the people who work on the movie, there's also people like caterers or or hairdressers or you know some some people who who aren't going to be making millions upon millions upon millions of dollars working on this thing like the stars and the and the director would. Right, so well, and even even some stars struggle. Uh, some actors struggle making yeah. money sometimes. So so I I I'd like to kind of squash the the misconception that oh because you work on a movie that means you're a millionaire, right? Because that's really not the case. I mean, there m movies have have crews of thousands of people, right? I mean. I mean, and TV shows uh, like Stranger Things, but I mean, you you go to the movie theater and you s and you watch the credits. Like for like, like even longer, like, like I mean, like 12, 12, 15 minutes, you know, for for some credits, and most of the time you're only watching them if it's a Marvel movie, so you can yeah. see the scene at the end. But but I mean, that's all of those people in the credits worked on that movie, right? And so not every single one of those people gets paid a million dollars, you know, to yeah. work on the film, right? So, so I mean, films closing down is a big deal for a lot of people and a lot of families. And so, and well, and there's even the people at like the movie theaters or the, the TV stations, you know, it, it affects a, a lot more people than, the, than just the millionaire actors. So this is definitely a, a, a great uh, a great thing for, for the crew, uh, the cast and crew of Stranger Things, and I'm glad to see them being able to resume production. With that being said, we're going to take another quick commercial break, and right after this, Alec Vaughn is in the house with his top five Stanley Kubrick movies. Channel 15 is now available on the Roku and Apple TV smart devices. Log on to Facebook.com slash My15News to learn more. So what's your story? Looking for a cost-effective way to begin your college career? One that's close to home? Or are you still unsure of a career direction? Here's the answer. The four Illinois Eastern Community Colleges. With 100 certificate and associate degrees in career and technical fields, many online and many transferable. Frontier Community, Lincoln Trail, Alney Central, Wabash Valley. Four colleges, one mission. Let us help write your life story. Check us out online at iecc.edu. I didn't want to go to community college because it was too small, too limiting. I wanted a place where I could expand my horizons and gain experiences for a strong future. Where I could meet people from other places and learn about them. A college choice that meant a strong start, not huge debt. Where I would have the support I needed. Where teachers knew my name and worked with me on a personal level. And people were ready and available to help me plan my future. That's why I choose my community college! More of the film reel with Alec Vaughn. Hi, I'm Alec Vaughn, and you're watching the film reel here on News Channel 15. 
and today I'm going to be talking about my top five family, favorite Stanley Kubrick movies. All right, at number five we have Paths of Glory. Paths of Glory takes place in 1916 in France during World War One. It stars Kurt Douglas, and uh, he leads a group of uh, his group of soldiers into uh, German lines. And, they are, and there's a group of soldiers who refuses uh, to march, and they have a big trial at the end. And uh, they pick out three uh, out of the whole group of soldiers uh, to put on trial. And at the end of the movie, uh, the three soldiers get executed. And, it, and it's a good look of how the French army wasn't very good at trying to stop World War I and trying uh, to win it. All right, and at number four, we have Spartacus. Spartacus takes place around the time of the Roman Empire. It's about a slave who turns into a gladiator and uh, leads a revolt and starts his own rebellion of gladiators in, in order to fight the Roman Empire. And uh, it just, it's a good movie because uh, it shows uh, how uh, one slave uh, can uh, fight off a whole uh, Roman army. And at number three, we have A Clockwork Orange. Uh, the film stars Malcolm McDowell as a psychopathic killer. Uh, he play, he's phenomenal at the role. Uh, the movie shows how much he really enjoys violence, and uh, at the middle of the movie, uh, he gets arrested and gets put in a mental asylum, and, and he's tied up and has uh, these things wrapped up in his eyes, uh, and he watches TV, and uh, the show's really violent, and the more he watches it, uh, the more he starts to resent violence, and at the end of the movie, uh, he can't handle it anymore, and tries to commit suicide until uh, the British uh, government uh, gets really out of hand and uh, tries to fix his problem. And at number two, we have uh, Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket takes place during uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, the special effects are really good for a war movie. Uh, the, at the beginning of the movie, there's this drill sergeant, and he has a lot of memorable lines. And a lot of the lines he came up with, uh, he came up with himself. And at the end of the movie, uh, the group of soldiers uh, are in this one uh, town, and uh, they get uh, caught with a sniper rifle. And the, eventually, they find the person who's actually been shooting it, and it's a little girl. And it just, and uh, they end up killing the girl. And it just uh, comes to show how uh, awful Viet the Vietnam War was. And at number one, we have The Shining. The Shining is a phenomenal horror movie. It's one of my top five, uh, you could say, of, favorite, of my favorite horror movies. It stars Jack Nicholson, and uh, he plays a role of a, of a recovering alcoholic, uh, and he's also an author. And at the end of the movie, he starts going to madness because he's in cabin fever with his wife and his son. And uh, there's these ghosts, and uh, they for, and they kind of enforce him a little to uh, try to kill his family so he could start drinking again. And it's just a great movie. Uh, and there's a wild goose chase at the end where Jack Nicholson uh, chases his family with a large axe. And uh, he breaks into uh, his wife's room and chops down the door with his axe and says, here's Johnny. And that's one of the most memorable lines in the movie. And that's going to do it for us here. Uh, for me, that is, uh, here on News Channel 15. Uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you, Alec. We're going to take one last break, and after that, we're going to take a look at the trailer for the new HBO Max original, The Witches, and wrap up the show. News Channel 15, winner of the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Award for the nation's best community college TV station. News Channel 15 presents Sports Extra, a weekly look at local and area sports. See it Thursday nights at 6.30 on News Channel 15, also posted to our Facebook page. It's Sports Extra. The tri-state source for alternative rock is 89.1 The Bash. Connect with us wherever you are on social. Listen live on our free mobile apps, online, or on TuneIn. We are today's hit alternative, 89.1 The Bash. It just takes a moment to spread from one person to another. So how do you break the germ cycle? 
Wash your hands often and always after <coughs> coughing, sneezing, handling food, and going to the bathroom. Lather the front, back, and in between for at least 20 seconds. If there's no soap or water available, use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Regularly disinfect common surfaces, including your phone. These small things can help break the germ cycle. Here in Southern Illinois, we all know the weather can change in an instant. When severe weather strikes, you can count on the team at News Channel 15 to provide you the latest information to keep you and your family safe. From watches and warnings to storm spotter information with our direct link to the National Weather Service, the team at News Channel 15 is here to give you the most up-to-the-minute severe weather coverage, not only on air, but also online and on our Facebook page. News Channel 15, putting Southern Illinois first. Welcome back into the film reel. Let's take a look at the trailer for The Witches. My story begins when I was a young boy. You'll be comfy here. Your mama's all wrong. I'd do anything for her to be here right now. Grandma was a tough lady with a big heart. And little by little, she brought me out of my sadness. Now if you feel that you can't go on, darling. I didn't know it. But there was a dark shadow looming nearby. Witches. They're real. And they hate children. Welcome. What would you do if there were mice running all around this hotel? I would call the exterminator. You see, girls? He would exterminate those brats. Uh, rats. We would exterminate the rats. Yeah, this was happening. They're here. That means a test is coming. Ladies, I have a plan. Andro, the transform a child into a mouse. <laughs> Whoa! Why are we mouses? Mice. mice. Whatever. Brother, it's me. Is that you, boy? We'll never let you get away with your filthy, evil plot. Who's gonna stop me? Doesn't matter who you are, or what you look like, so long as somebody loves you. You wouldn't happen to be carrying around a mouse on your person, now would you? A mouse? Mm hmm Why on earth would I be carrying around a mouse? That was a look at the trailer for The Witches, an HBO Max original. Definitely an interesting flick. It's based off of the book by uh, Roald Dahl. Uh, there was actually a 90s version of the film before this, but now this is a reboot with Chris Rock as the narrator and Anne Hathaway as the uh, main witch there. So, uh, John, uh, what you, what'd you think about this trailer? Um, I... <laughs> it, was, it was something. It was, I I have never you didn't like it? never heard of the book or the you never heard of, no or the other movie. Um, <laughs> but it's an intriguing idea yeah. that witches come and turn children into rats. Rats. Yeah. Yeah. Rats. Um, yeah. So it definitely looks like that this was a movie that got stuck in the two thousands. It feels like <laughs> we're in the twenties now, and uh, <laughs> uh, it, it feels like. You know, you know, like like the Stuart Little yeah, exactly. film. That's what I was it it kind of reminds me. That, I don't know if it's just because of the rat thing, but but it really kind of reminds me of the tone and feel and and even look yeah. of of Stuart Little. And I kind of feel like I I don't know if this movie is is supposed to be made for this time frame. It is an HBO Max original, so it is supposed to just be a streaming film. I wonder if it was always supposed to be that way. I have a feeling it was probably a coronavirus thing that maybe uh, made that into an HBO Max original. I might be wrong there, by the way. I don't know that for sure. Yeah. Uh, but it is an HBO Max original, so it does have that sort of advantage there to where if you have HBO Max, you, you're just going to stream it if you have kids or whatever. So you don't have to go out to the theater to go see it. So... 
I, th I think it has its advantage there, but otherwise, I don't think it would have been as successful. With that being said, we're going to wrap things up here on the film reel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Bryce West. This is John Freeland. Have a good night.